chiropractic profession is truly about overall quality of life and overall health. If your body is functioning the way it's intended to function, those symptoms that I just spoke about should go away on their own because everyone in this room is a self-regulating healing organism. Their bodies are supposed to function at 100%, heal at 100%, and adapt to stress at 100%. If all of these things were working in perfect harmony, guess what none of you would have? Pain and symptoms, right? So let's go back to 1885, okay? This is when the profession started. We're 122 years old this year, all right? It's an old profession. And most people in 2017 don't realize how old of a profession chiropractic truly is. So in 1885, quick show of hands, who knows how the chiropractic profession was founded? I think two people should, okay? <laughs> I hope, all right? Does anyone other than the two people on the table know how the chiropractic profession was founded? How about this? What does everyone think the first symptom of the first chiropractic patient was? Back pain, right? Anyone, would everyone agree with her? I mean, if it was back pain, I don't know if I'd tell the story because it's not that great of a story. But in 1885, there was a man named Dee Dee Palmer. Dee Dee Palmer was a magnetic healer in Davenport, Iowa. His first patient was Harvey Lillard, who was the janitor inside that building. 17 years prior to this, Harvey Lillard was working in a field. He picked something up and he heard a pop in his neck and he went deaf. Okay? Fast forward 17 years. We're back in 1885. His janitor is working in Dee Dee Palmer's building. Dee Dee Palmer, speaking to him one day, finds out how that story happened of how he went deaf. He examines his spine. He adjusts his neck. And just like that, his hearing came back. So in 1885, the chiropractic profession was founded upon a deaf man's hearing being restored. D.D. Palmer went around the world and he said, I found the cure for deafness, but that's not the case. People were coming around the world with deaf, that were deaf and they were not getting all their hearing back, depending on what caused the hearing loss to happen. What they were noticing is other things were started getting better, people's diabetes and heart issues and lung problems. So D.D. Palmer realized he did not find the cure for deafness, he found something that unlocks somebody's hidden potential to heal properly and allow their bodies to function, heal, and adapt the way they're supposed to, and their body and nervous system starts functioning properly. So that's how the chiropractic profession was founded, and now we're 122 years later, and most people think that it's for back pain and neck pain. So that's how the profession was founded. So I'd like to give someone an introduction to see what kind of potential a chiropractic adjustment or spinal manipulation would have on somebody because if there is interference within your nervous system, things are not going correctly. So the way I do things is I'm an upper cervical chiropractor. I deal with, there's 24 bones in your spine. I deal with two of them. They're the first two in your neck, C1 and C2, your atlas and axis. They are the most important bones in your body. Everyone knows who Christopher Reeves was, right? He was Superman. Christopher Reeves one day went riding on his horse in a competition. I just found this out last night that what day it was. It was on my birthday in 1995. That's weird. It was, right? Isn't that weird? May 20, 1995 was also, you know, that was, yeah, the centennial of, of chiropractic, 1895. It was 100 years after. So Christopher Reeves was riding on his horse. He fell off the horse and he broke two bones in his body. Two bones out of 206, and what happened to Christopher Reeves that day? Paralyzed. <coughs> he was paralyzed, right? From where? From neck, neck all the way down. He did not break the 24 bones in his spine. He broke two and went completely paralyzed from neck down. Now, his heart didn't work, his lungs, his kidneys, his liver, nothing worked until they did what? They hooked him up to a machine. His brain worked and his body worked. They could not communicate to each other, though. So once they hooked him up to the machine, the heart worked, the lungs worked, the kidneys worked, and his brain could work because he could communicate to people. But he broke two bones in his, in his body and went completely paralyzed. And those are the two bones that sit at the top of your neck, your atlas, and your axis. So that's why I, as a chiropractor, decided that obviously these two bones have to be the most important. There's the most mechanoreceptors and proprioceptors and nerve fibers, your vertebral artery runs right through the foramen of that bone, all right? Your brain stem sits inside of that bone. Your brain stem is a continuation of your brain. 
and it continues all the way down to your spinal cord, which allows everything in your body to communicate to each other. There's about 70 trillion signals that run from brain to body and body back to brain at any given second. Imagine that, 70 trillion signals. So when we're talking about your body functioning the way it's supposed to, all right, there's a lot of things that can go right and a lot of things that can go absolutely wrong. And when these things go wrong is when symptoms start occurring. And today we're going to focus mainly on migraines. I should have hit the next slide right here. This is just talking about the central nervous system, the spinal cord, and all of you should know about that. And go to the next one. And this is where it all started. So it, the studies show that migraine headaches, and we're seeing this more and more these days, are starting in children. Most people who have migraines as adults, their first migraines happen as a child. Does anyone in here experience migraines? How often do you get them? Um, <coughs> once a month. Once a month? Mm -hmm. Every couple of months. Just a couple times a year. What about just regular headaches? Who in here gets day. it every day? Every day also? That's a lot. So you guys hated last year, right? Because it was a leap year. That means you had a whole extra day of headaches. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So headaches every single day. You know, you know headaches and migraines and pain and symptoms, they're not normal, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's very common for you guys to get headaches because you have them every single day. <laughs> but there's absolutely an underlying structural cause to these problems. And that's what I'm going to be speaking about today. About You can go to the next one. So the cause of migraines. So it says headaches are often related to the misalignments of the C1 and C2 vertebrae because they're putting stress directly onto the brainstem. When you have stress on the brainstem, you have stress on to all of the structures that are coming out. So when these bones are subluxated or misaligned, is everyone familiar with the term subluxation? Yes? For real? Okay. Because the subluxation and misalignment, most people use them hand in hand with each other. It's the same thing, that bone is misaligned, putting pressure onto the nerves, pressure onto the related structures around it. So when you have a subluxation in these areas, now I said your vertebral artery runs through there, your brain stem runs through there, so you're putting pressure on these things, so your cerebral spinal fluid is not flowing properly. There's been MRIs that show in a, a patient before an adjustment and after, and the difference in their CSF flow. Now if your CSF flow is not functioning the way it's supposed to, and your brain is not getting the blood supply that it's supposed to, now tension can start building up in those areas. It's going up to the circular willis, into the brain stem, and now pr pressure onto the brain is occurring. And it's not brain pain that you're feeling. It's the tissue surrounding the brain. Now, if I remove those subluxations and interferences, take the pressure off the vertebral artery, off of the spinal cord off of the brain stem and allow your brain and body to communicate again at 100%, your body is now functioning the way it's supposed to. It relieves those muscles and tension off of the brain stem and your body should start adapting properly and the headache should start going away. The migraine symptoms should start going away. <clears throat> um, you can go to the next slide on that. So the next thing I want to speak about is something that is huge in our nation right now which I'm seeing, I'm going into high schools now and I'm presenting on to freshmen. And when I ask that question to freshmen in high school now, how many people in here experience headaches? Every single hand is pretty much going up. Why? Because what are kids doing these days that they weren't doing last generation? They're on their phones all day. They're on their tablets when they're done with them. And then they're on their computers and they're not going outside. They're not doing exercises and they're seriously ruining the structures of the spine. If your spine is supposed to have three curves in it, curve in the neck, mid-back, and low back, from the front it should be straight. These kids these days, I'm seeing when I'm x-raying these patients, that the children's spines are worse than their parents. Okay? This didn't happen. I come from a family of 12 chiropractors. My father, I grew up in his office. My father did not see x-rays of children's spines worse than the parents unless there was a major trauma. But now the major trauma is not a major trauma, it's a micro trauma, repetitive, minor thing over and over and over again, and these kids are losing their cervical curves. <clears throat> so there's major issues that can happen. If you lose that cervical curve, 
you're getting these subluxations, those muscles are becoming tight in this area, and when the muscles become tight in the area, it's pulling on the structure of the back of your skull, and now headaches can start occurring. So if you have these misalignments in the cervical spine, postural issues, your ears are supposed to be over your shoulders. Every inch your head moves forward, it's doubling the weight of your head. So an average head weighs about 12 pounds. So if your head is two inches forward, instead of 12 pounds, you're at 36 pounds of pressure directly on your spinal cord, directly putting tension onto the nerves, onto the structures, and pulling the brain stem, and now you have what? Symptoms. So in our office, we're seeing this more and more. Like it said, most migraines and headaches are starting in adolescence. It's not all of a sudden you're 35 years old and you experience your first migraine. Something's caused it from probably either a childhood injury, slip, fall, car accidents. A lot of problems occur because people don't think they're injured. Okay? I've had way too many patients that come into my office and I have to pull it out of them, like beg them, tell me what happened. Because I can look at your x-ray and I will know you were in a car accident. But people don't understand this term. I've had, were you ever in an accident? No. Have you ever been in a car accident? No. Have you ever got hit by a car? No. Well, I was in a motorcycle accident. So you really have to like explain to people what this is. And most people think that a fender bender, who in here has ever been in a fender bender? <clears throat> most of you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you all walked out of that fender bender, right? You all walked out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, there was no cuts or broken bones. Now, how long does it take a cut to heal? A week. A week, right? Mm -hmm. It starts scabbing up, the blood starts clotting, the cut, you put a band-aid on it, it's going to heal, right? A broken bone takes what? About 12 weeks to heal? Now, if you have a soft tissue injury, like a whiplash injury to your cervical spine, you lose that cervical curve, and now you have the tension there, there's little micro traumas in there, you have the ligaments that are attaching these bones together, get little micro tears, you get stair stepping in the segments, and now you're putting extra pressure onto your brainstem, on the spinal cord, on the nerves exiting the nerve roots, and now you don't feel it today, but soft tissue injuries take about 12 months to start healing. So what's worse, the soft tissue injury or a cut or a broken bone? The soft tissue injury. But people aren't feeling it today, so they, six months later, now they're feeling neck pain, and they're not associating with what it could have happened from. So if you don't associate what it could happen from, now I'm sitting in my consultation trying to explain why you have a headache or a migraine every single day, and you have no idea, and you don't tell me about these things, and then I x-ray you and I say, I see this whiplash presentation in your cervical spine. Please tell me when your car accident was. And they're like, oh, I guess I was in like 17 fender benders in the last five years. So whiplash can occur from an injury from a car accident that was going anywhere over five miles per hour. That's not very far, but fast, okay? Five miles per hour is not very fast, but an injury to your body, which is a rag doll inside of a 4,000 pound object hitting another 4,000 pound object. So you may not feel the problem today, but it doesn't mean it's not there. So we need to make sure that if you are in a car accident, or if your patients are in a car accident, or if someone you know has been in a car accident, to get checked. You have to get the x-rays to see, did it cause whiplash? Did it cause effects to these structures of your cervical spine? Because most likely it did, but the symptoms are not going to occur till later on in life. So we want to make sure that we don't wait for symptoms. Who brushed their teeth today? <laughs> Everyone brush their teeth. Who brushed their teeth yesterday? Everyone, right? Now, who in this room waited till they got their first cavity in their mouth and then decided to start brushing their teeth? <laughs> Anyone? No one did, right? The reason you brush your teeth is to prevent cavities, correct? Now, at the end of the day, if you didn't brush your teeth and your teeth rotted away, what could you go get? New teeth. New teeth, right? But you guys brush them every single day to prevent that from happening. Now imagine waiting till you're symptomatic to take care of your spine 
which houses your central nervous system, which allows every single thing in your body to function, heal and adapt properly, to allow your brain to communicate to your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidney, and you guys wait till it's symptomatic, and now you seek care, hopefully seek care. Most people in this room don't seek care once it's symptomatic. What does the majority of America's, Americans do if there's a symptom? They take something for it, right? They cover it up and they mask that problem. If you cover it up and mask the problem, what's gonna occur? It's gonna keep coming back and back and back. All of these things, let's just use back pain for an example. Or let, let's use migraines for an example, all right? Because that's what we're here to speak about. If you have a migraine, what, is, what do you t do when you get the migraine? I try you can be to honest. sleep and I do take some medication. <laughs> you do, right? Do. What do you do for your migraine? Now, every single time you've got a migraine over the past however many years, what do you do every single time? You take the medication. Now, is that medication there to correct what's causing your migraine? No, it's there to cover up and mask the symptoms. Everyone knows the definition of insanity, right? It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. All of these medications have one thing in common. It's that word refill on the bottle. That word refill on the bottle is telling you it's not looking to correct the cause. It's letting you deal with the symptoms. If you want to deal with the symptoms, that's fine. But I want you to also try to figure out what's causing it so we can co-manage the patients and allow them to actually truly get better. Make sure their body's functioning the way it's supposed to so that they can start healing and adapting to stress. If that starts happening, now their bodies and nervous systems are working properly and the things should start going away on their own. The next slide. This is just more different studies. It says over 70% of headaches arise from problems with the cervical spine and related structures. Headaches frequently caused by compression of the cervical roots and prolonged tension of the neck. So if you start losing these curves in your neck, that tension in the neck is going to start cutting off the blood supply, that blood supply to the neck. Now there's different types of headaches that are triggered by different types of things. Some people get migraines if they drink coffee or red wine or red meat. Now these triggers though, you have to look at why that trigger is happening. It's not normal for you to eat red meat and get a migraine. If it was normal for you to eat red meat and get a migraine, you know what everyone would do when they get a, eat red meat? They'd get a migraine. So just because there's certain triggers that happen and those triggers cause migraines does not mean that's a normal thing for a person to, to have. Let me go to the next slide. So what is the cause of a vertebral subluxation? So there's physical and emotional and trauma, okay? The, the stress to your body. Most people these days, everything is stressful, okay? Everything is stressful. So the three things that can cause these subluxations are those traumas, like the micro traumas that I said. If you have these traumas, those car accidents, the text net, the, on the computer, you're doing these things repetitive over and over and over again, those can lead to the structures of the spine being correct, incorrect, all right? Then you have the problems of the things we're putting into our bodies. We have to look at the stuff that we're eating and drinking every single day, the environment around us. We, all of these things are putting extra strain and stress onto our nervous systems to work harder. When our nervous systems are working harder, the hormones that we're having are becoming imbalanced. And another thing that a lot of people get is migraines during their menstrual cycle but that's a problem because their hormones are being imbalanced. Now, if you're at the upper cervical spine, C1, C2, your blood pressure receptors sit right inside of those, bo those bones, inside your vertebral artery. There was a study done by a physician. They got together with an orthopedic surgeon, a neurosurgeon, and they had people they were doing studies on high blood pressure. And what they did, for this study, is if you had high blood pressure, they would come in and do a laminectomy on the atlas. All right, they would remove the back portion of the bone. When they removed the back portion off the bone, it was taking pressure off the vertebral artery. When they took the pressure off the vertebral artery, people's blood pressure was regulating to normal. Imagine that, you have high blood pressure, instead of taking the drugs for it, we're just gonna cut a bone out of the back of your neck that bone that protects the most important structures of your body. Good luck getting into a car accident after that surgery, all right? 
So instead of cutting that bone out of the back, the chiropractor said, thanks for doing all the research for us. We can remove the pressure off the vertebral artery off of the brainstem by a specific chiropractic adjustment. Now, most people that are chiropractors do not want to deal with only adjusting the upper cervical spine. In Michigan, it's really hard to adjust only upper cervical spine because insurance companies, unless you're adjusting the whole body, they don't pay for this stuff. They don't. Your copay is higher than the, their amount they're paying for one region adjustment. So you pretty much have to be a cash practice, all right? <clears throat> so the chiropractors got together. They said if we remove the interference, adjust this bone. Now, I in my office take specific x-rays of the upper cervical spine. I take three x-rays of these two bones, one from the front, <coughs> one from the side, and one straight down the back. I do my analysis so I have a 3D image of exactly how that bone misaligned. I know if it's gone inferior or superior, left or right, and anterior and posterior. Based on those three alignments, I know exactly the line of drive and torque I need to put into the adjustment. So I can put this bone, which is super important, back into position as specific as possible. Because if it's that important, you want to make sure you're correcting it as specific as possible because it is that important. Now, there's extra training that I did after school when I graduated to become proficient in this, these two bones. That's it. Special, specific training to become proficient in these two bones right here. So we're talking about the different type of mi the micro traumas, again, the motor vehicle accidents, sports, the postural things, whiplash, and even occupation, being on the computer all day, sitting in front of the computer incorrectly. Go to the next slide. So this is just talking about the, the, the subluxation, how you're having interference and all the different problems that have been documented from the headaches, migraines, neck pain, vertigo, the hormonal imbalance. I bolded those because those things pretty much all lead to the same thing. A lot of people are having neck pain, but they're associating it with migraines and headaches because it's in that upper cervical region. Cervicogenic headaches are the most common form of headaches because of all that tension in the cervical spine. Let's go to the next slide for me. <clears throat> so the negative impact on lives. There are studies that have done that were showing that if a child suffers from migraines, it almost has as much negative impact as cancer in these kids because of the function that these kids are losing out on. These kids are missing school, their emotional development, physical health, and the migraines are reported impairment of school function it's almost like a chronic disease these kids are having. And like I said, I'm going to these schools now and everyone is suffering from these things. So that's what is important to come and teach you guys and teach the whole community about how to do these things correctly. I go into these schools and I teach them how to wear their backpacks properly so they're standing up straight. I teach them exercises to do in the morning, how to restore that cervical curve. And I teach them the importance of chiropractic to move those bones. If the bones are stuck in that position, you can massage that all day long and it's not going to move the structures. I work with a lot of massage therapists and physical therapists. Not in my office, I have them as experts. In my office, I have chiropractic. That's what I do because that's what I am. But I like to work with physical therapists and massage therapists because it's the whole picture. I like to work with physicians because my main focus as a chiropractor is to move the bones so your body can do the healing. Once I move that bone, what's attached to those bones? Muscles, ligaments, tendons. Those things need to be strengthened. So if we work as a whole group, as a team, you know what the patient's going to do? They're going to benefit from that. A lot of chiropractors and physicians, though, don't like working together. They want, they want it all for themselves. They want the glory. I don't care about that. I truly care about the patient receiving the best possible care Having a group of amazing doctors around me that if I have something going on with someone that I can refer that person there so the person can get the best results. Because that's what the final key for every patient should be. Whether they broke their leg, you want to make sure they have the best broken leg. Whether they're in a traumatic car accident, you want to make sure that they're getting the best possible care so they can have the best possible outcomes. <clears throat> Next picture. So the removal of the subluxation, that's where it comes in what I was explaining before, the extracurricular activities that I had to do to learn how to do this stuff. 
the x-rays, the analysis. You have to have an analysis. When I adjust the bone, if I adjust it incorrectly, you think that person's going to heal? No, right? It could have damaging effects. If I adjust that bone and it's all the way to the left, and I adjust the bone and I push it further to the left, it's going to be worse, right? The symptoms could be worse. I've seen people that were adjusted incorrectly and they start throwing up. They start having all of these crazy, crazy problems and issues. But I've seen people, and this is another story I'm going to tell real quickly. My father, I said, was a chiropractor. My father went into group homes. We're, I'm from Miami. He would go into group homes and take care of multi-handicapped children and adults. These kids were the sickest of the sick. These kids were the worst of the worst. Paraplegic, quadriplegic, autistic to the extreme. But there's just one kid that sticks out in particular that I like to share this story because it's another example of how important adjusting that upper cervical spine is. This kid was put into this group home after his parents, God knows, wants to know what they did to this kid. Put in this group home, extremely, extremely 100% autistic. This kid did not eat, he did not walk, he did not go to the bathroom, he did not speak, he stood in the corner. <laughs> they told the caretaker of the group home, just make this kid comfortable, he's not going to be here long. Like, he's going to be, die, okay? So my father was in this group home and he started adjusting this kid. This kid looked about two years old, okay? Just a little kid in the corner looked about two years old. My father went into this home and he was adjusting these kids. He started adjusting this little boy named Brian. Now I said he looked two years old. That's a weird thing to say, right? It's either he's two or not. When he started adjusting Brian's cervical spine, his atlas and axis, Brian started growing. Brian started talking. Brian started going to the bathroom. He started communicating and eating and growing to normal mental capacity. He grew to full size. Brian turned out was eight years old stuck in a two-year-old's body. Whatever happened to him at two years old made him literally lose all function and healing potential and the, the ability to adapt, and he was stuck in his two-year-old's body. So he started growing, started full mental capacity, and actually started going to elementary school, middle school, high school. So the potential of a chiropractic adjustment to remove interference from within the nervous system gave this kid who said, Give up on him. We, he's got no way of living, except if you remove interference and allow your body to do what's intended to do, which is to function, heal, and adapt at 100%, your body should start doing exactly that. And for this kid, Brian, it was to grow to normal size and normal mental capacity. So just imagine all the things that people suffer from. You have no idea how many times I've sat with someone in the consultation and they say, Doc, I've tried everything. And I go, you've been to a chiropractor before? And they go, no, why would I go to a chiropractor? And I was like, what do you mean you've tried everything? You haven't tried everything. You've tried things that you think were, were supposed to be tried. You were supposed to try, but you did not try everything. And I've had people that have these crazy symptoms. I've had five people in my office that I got hearing restored in their bodies. Five different people. I've had people that had these crazy diagnoses that they, they went to every doctor, every specialist. Oh, I went to UM. Everyone likes to tell me about their UM doctors. I went to UM and I tried this and this and nothing happened. And I started adjusting their upper cervical spine and their symptoms started going away. Because that's how important this area of the body is. The whole body is important. But this is the most important area. If you take the pressure off that brain stem, off of the vertebral artery, off of the nerves that are exiting the brain, and allow it all to flow properly, things are going to start working the way they're supposed to. <clears throat> Go to the next slide. So this is what we're talking about. Oh, some people have come into the office and said, oh, I have migraines, and I, or I'll speak to people out in the field, and I'll say, oh, I have migraines every single day. And I go, have you tried chiropractic? And they say, yes, I've tried chiropractic. <laughs> but I want to explain the difference. There's All chiropractic is good. Okay, I was published for a research article on Parkinson's disease that according to the medical profession, Parkinson's disease is what? It's an irreversible, debilitating disease. Well, I had three patients under care that all of their scales for Parkinson's disease got better over time under chiropractic care. Their drugs got, they started reducing their the drug intake and they started functioning better under chiropractic care. 
So it's not about that one chiropractic better. There's different techniques. There's hundreds of different techniques. So if, if you've tried chiropractic and it may not have got the results that you were looking for, before you jump into something crazy like surgery or jump into something crazy like let's live on these drugs for the rest of my life, there is different techniques that you may want to try. I have no problem. If I have a person that they're not getting well under my care, I have chiropractic. There's 12 of them in my family, but I have chiropractors in my area that I will refer that person to and say, let's try this first. You have, you want to try the least invasive stuff possible. Cutting the bone out to relieve your high blood pressure doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Now, if I can try a few different types of chiropractic care, and remove that stress from that area, and now the blood pressure is regulated, that seems like a smarter idea. Here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> so these are some pre and post x-rays of patients of mine. These are three different patients. I put them in this order because this was a, a corrective care after, this is just one month of care. So if you see in the first x-ray, the person lost that cervical curve, okay? They do not have that cervical curve. And the second x-ray, you can see, this is after one month of care, you can see it's starting to form, that cervical curve. When that cervical curve starts to form, now the tension is less in the neck and the symptoms start going away. And you can see the atlas right here. This atlas is supposed, your atlas is supposed to be at a 40, 35 to 45 degree angle. Her atlas was rotated a lot, so you can see it looks like a double there. And here you can see it's starting to go. So when I adjust your atlas, I'm putting a torque adjustment into it. That torque is to help rock that bone down. When the bone gets rocked down, it helps bring that cervical curve back. So that's the first patient. Let's go to the next one. This is the next one. This is a patient after two months of, of chiropractic care in my office. If you see, their neck was pretty much reversed, okay? Forget straight. You have straight, then you have, it's starting to actually reverse. <clears throat> this is the way they presented, and now after two months of care, you can see that's a pretty significant improvement. Most people don't think that's possible, okay? Most medical professionals I have really good friends that are spine surgeons and neurosurgeons, and I sit there and I send pictures like this to them. Because in their, in their minds, that's not possible. This is two months of care, two months of corrective chiropractic care with certain exercises that I have them doing, and that's after two months. Go to the third one. And this is a different, another patient after three months of care. You can see it goes from straight to almost a nice natural cervical curve. So it can be done. When you remove the subluxations, your body's natural response is to go back to the way it's supposed to. You're supposed to have these curves. You gain these curves when you're a, a child. You're born with no cervical curve in your neck. When you start to crawl and lift your head, it's when you form that cervical curve. So you form that cervical curve when you start crawling. That's why crawling is so important. You want to make sure the kid's crawling so they lift their head up. The problem is these days, is once they start crawling, then they start using their cell phones and tablets of their parents, okay? So they start losing these curves way quicker, and now it's becoming a nat almost a natural thing that children are, don't have these curves, and it's becoming more and more common every single day that kids are experiencing symptoms like migraines and headaches. Any other questions? All right, I want to thank you all very much.